Welcome. Today we're going to do Unit 6, Lesson 4. Um, so we, I broke apart um, solving quadratics by factoring. I broke that into two separate lessons. Today we're going to be solving quadratics by taking square roots. So um, I am going to say that it is possible, it is still possible to um, to solve some of these by factoring, and I'll show you what that looks like. But sometimes we might just want to do it by square root method because we like to do something different, okay? So I'm going to show you both methods. Um, quadratic equations that are in the form ax squared plus c, where they're missing that bx term, can all be solved with square roots, okay? So let me just remind you, if I had chosen to do this example here by factoring, this would be a difference of squares. If you remember that or refer back to that uh, lesson, because this is a minus sign, x is a perfect square, 49 is a perfect square. And then our factors would look like um, x and 7, x and 7, where we break it up, and 1 is minus and 1 is plus. That would be solving it by a difference of squares. And then we would need to use that zero product property and say x equals positive 7, x equals negative 7. And that would be our two solutions. Okay. Um, so can you still do that by factoring? Absolutely. If you want to, go for it. Uh, and, oh, I do need to say one more thing. I'm going to scroll my thing down. I already wrote this. Okay, we have seen this before, but it's been a little while. Notice that I have a plus sign and a minus sign in front of the two. So we just read that as plus or minus two, but that really breaks down and it means two separate numbers. I have a positive two and I have a negative two. I have two different numbers. So if I wanted to write the solution here, I could take this and just write plus or minus 7, okay? It's both a positive 7 and a negative 7 as a part of my solution. All right, now that you remember how you can do this by difference of squares, let's do it this way. A new way, let's first isolate the x squared. That's step number one. So isolate means get it by itself. So add 49 to both sides. x squared equals 49. And then what you do is you take the square root of both sides. So square root that, square root that. Remember that a square and a square root cancel each other out. And I actually want to switch back here. OK. Now, what is the square root of 49? And a lot of you are going to say 7, but you have to be careful. Um, there are two ways to get to 49. You can do 7 times 7, but you could also do negative 7 times negative 7 and get to 49. So I have two solutions, and a lot of people forget about that second part of the solution, okay? So that is solving by taking the square roots. Let's jump down to, I'm going to do example four down here. Okay, I'm going to subtract, I'm going to isolate my x squared term, so subtract seven from both sides, x squared equals 81. If I square root both sides, x equals plus or minus 9. That's all, folks. There's really nothing else to it. Okay? Uh, let's look at example 7. How do I isolate the x squared term in 7? Well, it says negative 2 times x squared. So I need to divide both sides by that negative 2. And now I have x squared equals a positive, okay, so in a negative divided by a negative is positive, positive 49. 
square root, square root, x equals plus or minus 7. Number 8, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you will need to remember whenever we have a fraction, if we want to get rid of that fraction, we multiply all the terms by the denominator. Okay, so I would have 3x squared now equals 48 times 4. All right, and then divide by 3 after that. 48 times 4 divided by 3. Okay. All right. I want to give you two more examples under here. Okay. What about irrational solutions? I have given you a, several examples that have rational solutions. Remember, those are integers, um, fractions, whole numbers, natural numbers, all of those things. But what if it lies on the irrational side? Remember, irrational numbers are numbers that go on and on forever. They don't have repeats. They can't be written as fractions, um, like the number pi. That's my always go-to example for an irrational number. Okay, let's talk about how we do this. So the process is going to be the same. Start by isolating the x squared term. And then now I'm ready to take that square root. Okay, so I've got that x by itself. But the number 8 is not a perfect square. So here's what I'm going to do. Break it down. I've got 4 times 2 and then 2 times 2. So this 8 is made up of... 2, 2, and 2, okay? A square root needs for there to be two numbers that are exactly the same. So here are two numbers that are exactly the same, and they're going to come out. This number is a poor, stuck little guy. He doesn't have a partner to help him get out. I sometimes refer to um, the square root as like a jail cell and then I like to compare that to all the wonderful movies that there are out there in the world about people escaping from jail and there's always groups of people and then I say some people get out and some people die along the way that's all I'm saying um so this I'm sorry I circled the wrong thing but that too is stuck inside jail he never got to come out and then this blue two dude, he got out and this one died along the way. He got shot or something. I don't know. All prison movies are the same way. And then I'm stuck with this as an answer. Oh, and it's plus or minus, by the way. Still plus or minus, so don't forget that. So it's kind of unique. You will see this a lot more in math too. Let's do number 12. Subtract the eight from both sides. 56 minus 8 is 48. We are going to have to square root both sides. So I have this x by itself. And now I'm going to break 48 down with a factor tree as far as I can. So I have 6 times 8, and this is 2 times 3, and this is 2 times 4. So my two things that are the same are two and two. They're going to work together to get out of jail. That guy made it. That guy didn't. Okay. This two made it out. This two did not. And then I have another set of twos. This two is going to make it out. This two is not. Okay. And now I only have a three left inside there. Perfect. So I have a three. He's stuck inside the jail cell. Booyah. And then um, this is still plus or minus. You have to just put these together. Plus or minus four square roots of three. All righty. Um, now, if you type this in your calculator, because I know some of you will want to, what you're going to get is like 6.9, except it's going to keep going. I've just rounded it. Okay. So it will be equal to a decimal value. All right, now the last part of today's lesson, 
is a topic that I like to show to students, but it is not in our Math 1 curriculum. You will need to use this later in Math um, 2 and 3, I believe, but not in Math 1. But it is another way to solve quadratics um, that will get you to a solution 100% of the time without failure. Sometimes we can't factor a quadratic and get a solution. Um, sometimes we can't square root it and get a solution. So our only option would be the quadratic formula. Um, so let me just show you kind of how it works so that you have been exposed to it, okay? So what you're going to want to do is make sure that your equation is in standard form, right? It's equal to zero, which this one is. Then I want you to identify your A, B, and C. And I'm going to use colors for this, okay? A equals 1. That's the number in front of the x squared. B equals negative 5. And C equals negative 36. Well, it's not supposed to cross it out, but there you have it. All right, now I'm ready to plug everything into this quadratic formula. You can think I'm crazy all that you want to, um, but I taught my son a wonderful little song when he was a toddler, okay, that he still remembers, and he calls this the letter song because it has lots of silly letters in it. He's not talking about the alphabet. He is talking about the quadratic formula. So let me sing it for you. This is my son's song. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And Mrs. Brown is not a singer. So what I will do is I will take a video of my children singing the letter song for you. And I will upload that with this video. All right. I'm about to sing the letter song and I've been singing this since I was two. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. One more time. Okay. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay, let me zoom back out so that we can do the problem together. All right, so I'm going to plug everything into this formula. X equals negative B. So B is negative 5. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared. So negative 5 squared minus 4 times A times C. There we go. Squeezing it in. All over 2 times A. And 2A is 1. So I have plugged everything in. I've color coded, right? B is green and green. And then A is red and red. And then the C is blue. So replace that color with that color number. And we're good, right? Now we simplify. This is the fun part. So negative negative 5 is just 5. Negative 5 squared is positive 25. I need to multiply all three of these numbers together. So negative 36 times negative 4 is 144. And then of course times 1, that won't change the value. All over 2 times 1 is 2. And now let's go ahead and reduce 25 
plus 144 is going to give me 169. Okay, now there are some cases where you can leave your answer exactly like this. But in this particular case, we can keep calling, I'm sorry, we can keep reducing this. So the square root of 169, a long time ago, I gave you the whole list of all the perfect squares. And if you remember, 13 times 13 equals 169. So I'm now going to move this way. 5 plus or minus 13 divided by 2. Not done yet. Remember what that plus and minus say. So 5 over 13 divided by 2. 5 something with the 13 divided by 2. Okay, so remember 1 has to be the plus and 1 has to be the minus. And now I can simplify these. 5 plus 13 is 18 over 2 is 9. And now I have 5 minus 13, which is negative 8 over 2 and reduce that again and I get a negative 4. Whew. So here's my answers everybody. Negative 4 and 9. I know that the quadratic formula does a little too much. It does, it does a lot, but it is the only surefire way guaranteed without a calculator every time that you can solve any quadratic in the whole entire world. Promise, promises, promises. All right, so enjoy the video from the children. Practice, practice, practice. You do not have to use the quadratic formula if you don't want to, but you're going to need it next year, okay? And just remember also that you can use the square root method or you can use um, the distance or difference of two squares method. Until next time.